Aquaponics is the beautiful merging of hydroponically grown, soil-free vegetables and aquaculture, the sustainable growing of fish in tanks or ponds. The system is waste-free, chemical-free, and conserves valuable resources. The Greenleaf Inn is going to be a demonstration project of the first net zero energy hotel in the United States and possibly right now in the world. Converts it into mechanical energy. The solar thermal heat is being concentrated with this parabolic dish onto a little shaft here which is connected to what's called a Stirling engine. Well, Stony Brook University professor Lei Zhao is hoping to change that by harnessing the power of passing trains and converting it into electricity. <laughs> And with that, welcome back. It's Radio Free Canada Innovation Section. That's right. It's Fantastic Friday, so we have to talk about these things today. It is Fantastic Friday, January the 18th, 2013. Welcome to the show. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. You know all the disclaimers, so we don't need to write them out for you. We're out of the box thinkers, bringing you noise and solutions that you will not hear in mainstream media. And one of the things they're not talking about in mainstream media is our energy policy and our food security. We need to get off of oil, and we have the ability to do it. It's an easy solution that can create food for us locally and create jobs for everybody who needs them, but that's being ignored by major media. And there is a great technology going on called aquaponics where people are able to have sustainable food sources in their communities. We're doing the Municipal Sustainability Program, and it starts right here. You're listening to Radio Free Canada. Uh, let's run the clip so you can get informed. Okay. CSA Aquaponics catalyzes community partnership to ease the food burden placed on our oceans by promoting a reliant local food source through aquaponics education, teaching communities and individuals how to grow organic food locally and sustainably. Hello, I am Richard Sundance Owen, the Executive Director of Environmental Cleanup Coalition, an ocean education and advocacy organization located in Santa Cruz, California. We have partnered with internationally renowned aquaponics designer Max Myers of NorCal Aquaponics and some amazing local educators to create our latest initiative, CSA Aquaponics. CSA Aquaponics combines three key principles, aquaponics, community supported agriculture, and a specialized educational model designed to expand aquaponics technologies. Aquaponics is the beautiful merging of hydroponically grown, soil-free vegetables and aquaculture, the sustainable growing of fish in tanks or ponds. The system is waste-free, chemical-free, and conserves valuable resources. Community-supported agriculture is a business agreement between farmers and their subscribers. The community clients pay the farmer in advance for production costs in exchange for a guaranteed delivery of fresh organic produce and fish, connecting community members directly with their food and local farms. And education. Our center will offer aquaponic systems certification, workshops, and classes to individuals and the community providing technical training opportunities for a broad spectrum of individuals, including displaced workers, youth, and persons living with a disability. CSA Aquaponics has an exponential effect. By increasing the supply of local organic foods within neighborhoods, by teaching communities how to build systems and teach others, therefore easing the food burden off of the oceans and reducing our collective carbon footprint. Here are the ways that you can get involved. Become a student and sign up for one of our courses beginning in 2012. Sponsor a student by providing a scholarship. Become a CSA member and subscribe to the farm and receive a share. Host a course on your land and become the owner of a working aquaponic system. Learn more about CSA Aquaponics or you can make a donation today at www.csaaquaponics.org. We are honored to be of service, providing education through food and water stewardship. Environmental Cleanup Coalition and CSA Aquaponics are addressing the major issues facing our planet today.
And you know that's the way the Community Sustainability Project in Kelowna starts. Yes, that's right. We need community-supported agriculture happening in this city to ensure our own food security. But we get food from thousands of miles away. We've seen the doubling and tripling of bread and meat prices. Never a story about that in CHBC. Oh, no, because that's not part of the economy. Energy and the food prices are not part of the economy. So every time you see the inflation rate, realize that inflation rate is a lie. And aquaponics is the solution. Let's run one more story for you on another solution. In a world where the safety of our food supply is constantly being faced by climatic change, E. coli bacteria, and contaminants of all kinds, Advanced Farms proposes an eco-friendly vertical farm solution that guarantees a food source that can be grown in protective environments 365 days a year anywhere in the world. Currently, we are specializing in lettuce, microgreens, and tilapia, and have the ability to produce over 300 different types of crops in our systems. Advanced Farms produces the safest, highest quality food products possible. Our vertical farming project location, Columbus, Ohio, will produce over 35,000 pounds of food per year in a 1,500 square foot space. This is 12 times the amount of food grown in a 1,500 square foot space on a conventional farm. Our project will be a net zero project consuming only renewable energy for our food production. Advanced Farms currently serves prestigious clients in Columbus, Ohio with high quality microgreens on a small scale. Currently, we cannot keep up with their demand. So that's a, a, we're going to run the links for those ones on YouTube. Uh, we couldn't find this guy from Advanced Farms on the internet. Well, he just may be the uploader. Okay. I so, may have just pieced together that, but he did cite the work that he looked into for that video as well at the end of it there. So always check our sources to make sure that you keep informed. Aquaponics is one of the leading employers in some metro areas, and we're not doing it. And vertical farming being combined with aquaponics seems like a very good idea to me to really uh, keep the footprint down. But what you would need would be a community with strong agricultural ties with a really good power and metro infrastructure and lots of unemployed people. I mean, that's, Gee, that's I a, could just about pick any place in the country that would cover those. Uh. <laughs> Solutions being ignored by mainstream media right now. Let's talk about solar thermal and Sterling engines. Yes? Yes. Okay. What we're demonstrating today is a device which concentrates solar energy onto what's called a Stirling engine. A Stirling engine converts the thermal energy, which is heat energy, as opposed to the light energy from the sun, and converts it into mechanical energy. The solar thermal heat is being concentrated with this parabolic dish onto a little shaft here, which is connected to what's called a Stirling engine. So we can see that we take a piece of paper just for as a demonstration and put it into the focal point where the post is you should be able to see that it begins to smoke right away the temperatures are quite hot it's just like the same concept behind a magnifying glass you take a big area and concentrate all that energy into a small area and this engine works as a difference between a very hot side and a cooler side that thermal difference we can translate into mechanical energy. We can have a little engine. You can see it, hear it. The engine is working directly from the sunlight rather than trying to plug it into the wall. In addition, it, you can do a second conversion where you transfer the mechanical energy from the motor, the Stirling engine, into electrical energy so we can create electricity from the sun heat as opposed to photovoltaics which we looked at earlier which converts the sunlight into electrical energy you know it's one of my uh, favorite days it's because of solutions right okay that's right and as long as they scale that uh, technology up i'm sure we can use the sun's power to uh you know 
power our industry, our, our, our society. You know, you know, Germany gets about as much sunshine as we do here in the Okanagan, and they have, what, 3,000% more solar energy? Yeah, well, they do say the uh, amount of energy striking the Earth from the sun in a day is enough to power everything for a year. Yeah, okay. But, you know, uh, we haven't... A gas station to support because that's so important. Uh, let's take a look at, well, what? You want to run that? Well, this is a test bed for uh, energy systems. Okay, check it out. The Greenleaf Inn is going to be a demonstration project of the first net zero energy hotel in the United States and possibly right now in the world. A net zero energy building means that it's actually producing more energy on site than it consumes over an annual basis. Sometimes we'll generate more electricity. Sometimes you'll be using some electricity from the grid. But on an annual basis, we'll actually be generating more electricity on site than is consumed. And that will be done actually with seven different energy systems. We have our 50 kW endurance wind turbine. The turbine will generate enough electricity for about nine homes on an annual basis. We will have solar photovoltaic panels that are roof mounted. That will be about a 30 kW array. In addition, we will have 15 kW ground mounted solar electric system. There will be a dual axis tracking solar electric system. By tracking the sun throughout the day and the season, it will increase the production by about 30% compared to a fixed mount panel. We are installing a combined heat and power or cogeneration system which generates electricity and hot water simultaneously burning a single fuel natural gas. So overall you're about 90% efficient compared to a normal power plant is only about 35% efficient. We'll have three different solar thermal systems, an evacuated tube, concentrating tracker, and a flat plate solar thermal system. So we'll be able to tell you which one works better under different conditions throughout the year. Summertime versus a little bit of cloud versus which one works better in the winter time. An outdoor wood boiler will be added for heating in the winter and hot water as needed. Wood is a renewable resource. Heating and cooling will also be done with a geothermal system. A geothermal system will make us hot water as well. And finally, a thermal storage system which will move the energy around between the different thermal energy systems. This 1,250-gallon insulated R80 energy storage tank is buried underground. The Greenleaf Inn is the demonstration project to experience all of the renewable energy systems that are available. For more information, please go to greenbuildtv.com. Holy smacks of coolness, Nat, man. Well, they're really figuring out what works best. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm really impressed with that. Here locally, we're trying a municipal sustainability project, and we delivered some uh, rather large information packages to our local city hall. But, you know, they're not really that interested in it. No. And it kind of makes me wonder why not. Well, you maybe know, they're in the pocket of energy giants. Who knows? You know? Yeah. Don't want to, you know, make any... Don't want to indulge in, you know, conspiracy theories or anything like that. <laughs> Let's see, our, our mayor is a former Fortis employee, and then our city sold our utility to Fortis. Hmm. Uh, no, nah, it's just a coincidence. We're going to run a bunch of clips afterwards uh, here, and we're going to do an addendum to this one, and we're going to include a couple clips talking about what there, brother? Well, we do have a, uh, some clips talking about uh, turning food waste into energy. Okay. And a couple about... Um, Oh, well, there are solutions they're coming up with for energy problems. So make sure you get informed about innovations right here in the Okanagan and the way that we could solve our world's problems. It's just being ignored by major news. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. This is Radio Free Canada. Well, Stony Brook University professor Lei Zhao is hoping to change that by harnessing the power of passing trains and converting it into electricity. The proceeding was a production of New Mexico State University.
The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.